Probably the single most important part of no-till production is having a planter that is properly equipped. This includes the right design features and attachments, having it correctly set up and adjusted to meet varying field conditions, and properly maintained to keep it in tip-top shape. Planting under no-till conditions is more challenging, but the goal is the same as in tilled fields. Seed that is evenly spaced, planted at a uniform depth, and covered firmly. With the planting equipment that is available today, these goals can be met under a wide range of conditions. During this video program, we will address all the critical parts on a corn planter, beginning at the hitch point and continuing through to the closing wheels. Think about how these things relate to the planter that you have and the types of field conditions you might encounter. Perhaps you will discover something that leads to better stands and higher yields. Uh, first and foremost, you want to make sure the planter is level front to back. The easiest way to start that operation is to measure the uh, hitch plate at the front of the planter on the front of the tongue. And that's this plate right here between my fingers. Not the added on part that was put onto this planter. This is an add on aftermarket and would throw your markings off or your measurements off if you measured from any part of it. You want to go with this line straight in here from my finger. And you want the bottom of this plate to be right at about 14 inches. This particular planter over time we found out the best uh, operations at about 14 and a half to 15, somewhere in that range. But it gives you a good starting point that you're going to have a level planter front to back. And you can see right here we're at about 14 and a half on this ruler. Uh, you have adjustments in, in the front. The tractor uh, draw bar, they vary from tractor to tractor. And you can turn them up or down, flip them over. And uh, some tractors you can't change the height of the draw bar, in which case you would use the uh, holes here in the front of the hitch uh, plate to adjust the hitch clevis on the planter. And you can put it up or down till you get this height from the ground. And you can also uh, flip the hitch clevis over to give you an additional set of adjustments. So that's the basic thing, is to do that combination of operations between the draw bar and the tractor, the hitch clevis on the planter, adjust that so that this plate, when you're hooked up to your tractor, is between 14 uh, to 15 inches from the ground. And I think the operator's manual, most of the planters, it's 14. There are many road cleaning wheel variations. The shark tooth or tiger paw design is very aggressive and due to the width of the cutting teeth can move a considerable volume of soil. As long as the teeth are sharp, they will cut residue. The curved spike tooth with treader wheels will release residue somewhat easier than the straight spike tooth. Where cover crops are large in size, they will not wrap around the row cleaner wheels as easily when this the curved spike tooth design is used. Floating spike row cleaners with treader wheels have wide application to move residue out of the row without moving much soil. For floating residue managers, the ability to limit their depth of operation is desirable. Limiting the row cleaner's depth of operation will assure that only crop residues are moved and soil remains in place. Additionally, depth limitation will keep the row cleaner from gouging if it encounters extreme field unevenness such as groundhog holes. One or two treader wheels per row cleaner will also prevent spikes on the row cleaners from running too deep, but will not usually prevent problems associated with extreme field unevenness. Some operators that use the spike wheels for seed for our closing will move those spike wheels to the row cleaning units after some wear, say a quarter to a half an inch of wear off of those spikes. This allows the soil not to be easily moved by the row cleaners. Okay, here you have the shark tooth or tiger claw row cleaner with an adjustable height mounting system. Once you set it, that's where you're going to be set. So the ground's not very even, your row cleaning's not going to be very even. Solid concave disc row cleaners are aggressive cutters and will clear most any residue material from the row area. 
Due to their aggressiveness, they can potentially move too much soil if not equipped with a depth gauge wheel. In no-till colder selection, a 13-wave colder is one of the most preferred designs. The 13-wave is aggressive, has some row cleaning action, and loosens soil to aid in good seed-to-soil contact, while greatly limiting the potential for seed for a sidewall smearing and or compaction. The turbo no-till colder is used where soil penetration is challenging, as they generally will more easily penetrate the soil in dry planting conditions. Care must be taken in moist planting conditions to monitor seed furrow sidewall smearing with the turbo no-till colder. We have here the bubble colder uh, put on this no-till planter. It's actually a misfit for this planter. The bubble colder is a minimum till colder and when it's used in a no-till planter it can create some problems. The design of the colder uh, allows as it runs through the soil for the bubbles to smear the sidewall of the seed trench and then slick it as it raises up out of the soil as it turns. And so you have that sidewall smearing and compaction problem, which probably is the initial reason why they went, many people went to spike closing wheels to try to break up that sidewall smear and compaction that you got from this colder, which is actually not designed to be on a no-till corn planter.